I've got a really cool dissection I want to show you, so let's take a look. You can see we've got two kidneys here. One's been cut in half, and this is the one we're going to focus on. This was just for a frame of reference, so let's slide that out of here. Welcome to the Anatomy Lab, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about why women have to pee so much when they're pregnant. Yeah, we have a pretty good idea that the uterus enlarges and encroaches on the space of that poor little bladder, and we will go over that anatomy. We'll show you a real uterus and a real bladder and their relationship to each other, but what about when that embryo is teensy tiny and the uterus hasn't enlarged much yet? Why do women still report that they have to pee more frequently in early pregnancy? So we're gonna tackle that. We're also gonna show you something really awesome. We have a fetus that's 26 to 28 weeks along, but it's 30 years old. This has educated so many people, thousands of people on anatomy and embryology, and we're gonna compare the size of the fetus to an actual regular sized uterus. So that'll be exciting, but let's get right into this peeing when you're pregnant. So what produces your urine in the first place? Well, that's a function of these cute little organs that we call the kidneys. You see, the kidneys sit in the upper abdominal cavity, just in front of the 11th and 12th rib. So if we were to use Jeffrey here to show this, you'd see the kidneys would sit right about here on either side of the spine, just in front of the 11th and 12th rib there. So gotta say thanks to Jeffrey for letting us use him. But what is the main function of the kidneys? In general, we say that the kidneys filter the blood or get rid of waste products. So due to this other wonderful organ here that we call the heart, let's pull that pericardial sac away, see this cool organ here, because the heart is pumping blood 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that means urine's flowing through the kidneys 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and therefore, you're making urine 24 seven. So to further illustrate the anatomical awesomeness and the function of the kidney, I've got a really cool dissection I wanna show you, so let's take a look. You can see we've got two kidneys here. One's been cut in half, and this is the one we're gonna focus on. This was just for a frame of reference, so let's slide that out of here. We're gonna zoom in to this kidney here. Now remember, I mentioned the kidneys are always getting blood pumped through them. And there's this artery here called the renal artery that you can see is starting to branch and this will eventually distribute blood in tiny blood vessels to the cortex or the outer regions of the kidney. The outer regions of the kidney is where the filtration is gonna take place. And while it's filtering, water and waste products are being pulled out of the blood and they're starting to get collected in these conglomerations that we call renal pyramids. If you look closely at this one, you can see this renal pyramid and if we trace it back, this is collecting urine to go down to these tubes that eventually are gonna funnel into one larger tube that we call the ureter, and that eventually takes the pee or urine down to the bladder. Now, remember, we filtered the blood out here. The blood went in through the renal artery, but now all that filtered blood is gonna funnel into one major vein called the renal vein, and now that cleaned or filtered blood can go back through systemic circulation. Now, how does all this change during pregnancy? Anyone who's been pregnant can attest to the fact that there are multiple body system changes that occur to accommodate baby time. Now we're going to focus on the ones that are part of this urine story, and one of those is the cardiovascular system. You see, the cardiovascular system responds to the hormones and the increase in signaling molecules that are released during pregnancy. That causes widespread vasodilation, which is the blood vessels opening up and therefore increasing blood flow. Also, remember this wonderful organ, cardiac output goes up with increased heart rate, and also you have an increase in blood volume. Now, if those changes weren't impressive enough for you, these guys, remember our little kidneys, literally increase in size during pregnancy by about one to 1.5 centimeters. For you humans that are non-metric, that's about a half an inch. And again, all of this should make sense because there's this increased demand placed upon a woman's body during pregnancy because we've got to accommodate a growing life inside. So remember that word vasodilation? There's a hormone released by the ovaries and the placenta that causes even more vasodilation to occur within the actual kidney. Now remember, we saw these tiny little blood vessels through here, and if those are gonna vasodilate and open up, that's gonna increase, further increase blood flow within the kidneys. Now the name of that hormone is called relaxin. Now many of you may have heard of that hormone and people will say that it relaxes the pelvic ligaments to allow the pelvis and those bones to be a little more loosey-goosey for baby to pass through. Now there's been some debate on that in humans actually because we've shown that estrogen does a really good job on relaxing those ligaments as well. So more on that in a different video. 
but relaxin has been shown to open up the blood vessels or vasodilate the blood vessels of the kidney. You can kind of think of it as like relaxing those blood vessels. So all these increases in flow and blood volume passing through the kidneys increases something called glomerular filtration rate or GFR. Now there's these little structures called glomeruli or glomerulus for singular. There's almost a million of these little guys in each kidney and these are where the filtration typically takes place. So when they talk about that filtration rate, that's essentially how much blood and filtrate is going through and being filtered within the kidneys. That goes up to by 40 to 50% in women. So if you increase the glomerular filtration rate with all this blood passing through, what's gonna happen? Urine output's gonna go up and women are gonna have to pee more. So Jeffrey has made me aware that I probably could have just said, hey, when you're pregnant, Cardiac output goes up, meaning more blood flow, more blood's going through the kidneys, more blood's getting filtered by the kidneys and therefore producing more urine, therefore women have to pee more. I could have, but it wouldn't have been as cool. And with that being said, let's go to the uterus. Jeffrey can't come. Okay, so I may have left the other side of the lab a little prematurely because I wanted to mention one last thing. Think about this idea of baby or fetus also producing waste products of its own. So increased urination or increasing blood flow through the kidneys isn't just to make mom's life miserable and make her spend more time on the toilet. It makes sense to more efficiently push things through the kidney to not only get rid of mom's waste products, but also baby's waste products. So with that being said, let's go to this other idea or this other reason why women have to pee more frequently when the uterus gets larger. This is a little bit more known. It makes a lot of sense that if uterus gets larger, it's gonna push on some things that aren't normally pushed on. So let's take a look at this dissection here. So this is a sagittal cut through the midline of the human body right through here. Or in other words, if you just look at me, cut like so, and we're looking into the right side of the lower abdominal cavity in the pelvis here. Now, if I take the probe, this structure here is the uterus. It's crazy, right? This is about, it's not a perfect midline cut, slightly to the right, so just less than half of the uterus here. Just for fun though, we gotta say hello to the little ovary. Let me just grab it with my gloves here because half of baby came from that, right? Now, the relationship of the uterus to this structure here, this is the bladder or the urinary bladder. Now, as the uterus expands and grows, it's going to start displacing things. It's gonna start pushing the guts outward and upward, and then it, as baby gets a little bit larger, this might flop down and push down on the actual bladder here. Now, if baby gets even more creative and decides that it's WrestleMania and does some flying elbow off the top rope onto the bladder, or decides it's time for mixed martial arts practice in the middle of their little cocoon of love that we call the uterus, and they jab down on the poor little bladder, mom's gonna be like, whoa, I gotta pee. So based on that dissection, you can definitely see as uterus increases in size, it can increase the pressure on the urinary bladder and give mom that wonderful sensation of needing to pee and sometimes cause mom to squeeze a little bit of urine out when she least expected it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are about to show you a fetus that is 26 to 28 weeks long and you'll see the size in comparison to the actual uterus. So. Let's buckle up for this. I just want to mention this real quickly here. We do like to have fun in the cadaver labs, but I'm gonna get a little bit more serious just for a second here. This can be a little bit more challenging for people just because it's a fetus, but this is a really, really, really important part of learning in human anatomy. This fetus has been around for 30 years, 30 years, educated thousands and thousands of students on embryology and human anatomy. So we always talk about cadaver labs, they're not really about death. Cadaver labs are much more about life than they are about death because we teach the living. And the living are gonna leave, hopefully these videos, students coming through our labs, with more information about helping those around them. So that being said, let's take a look at this amazing little, little guy that's actually educated thousands. Okay, so as I zoom out here, I'll bring the fetus into the frame here. And this little guy, like I said, has educated thousands of students here. You can see really well developed, the umbilical cord coming around like so. And if I continue to rotate, you can see male. And this is a male fetus. And he, like I said, he has educated lots and lots of students here. 
this tissue over here, if I rotate over, is essentially what's left of the placenta. What's so remarkable about this is if we compare it to the size of the uterus here. So rotate over here again, and you can see here's the uterus, and the amazing changes that the female body goes through to accommodate life is such an amazing process. So hopefully that gives you guys this new perspective of the development of life through human anatomy. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, blow up our comment section below with questions and future video ideas that you guys would like to see. We have our merch and our affiliate programs below. Helps to support, make future videos for you guys. And until next time, stay safe out there.